Apollo 10 would be a dress rehearsal for the lunar landing. There were still a number of systems, including landing radar that could only be checked out above the lunar surface. In addition, Apollo 8 had detected some strange gravitational fluxes during their 10 orbits. These two would be investigated. The LEM, nicknamed Snoopy, separated from command module Charlie Brown. Stafford and Cernan's orders were clear. Follow the flight path down towards the landing site in the Sea of Tranquility. Come within some 50,000 feet of lunar soil, then release the descent stage and rocket back into orbit. We did everything that needed to be done except the landing itself, which made, I think, life a little bit more comfortable for the Apollo 11 crew, because a big challenge then was from, from 47,000 feet down to the deck. Hello, Houston, Houston, this is Snoopy. Right, Snoop, go ahead. We is going, we is down among them, Charlie. Roger, I hear you weaving your way up the freeway. Well, knowing, uh, knowing a little bit about astronauts, uh, I think that, you, that the, 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 um, the, uh, the idea of making that landing certainly crossed their minds, but knowing how disciplined they were and how much discipline was in this entire flight test program, uh, it was not conceivable that it was going to happen. When we made two passes over the lunar surface on Apollo 10 with the lunar module, separated from our command module several, I don't know, tens or hundreds of miles away, uh, on a second pass, we then simulated what would have to be done on the surface, where you separate the two stages, fire the asset engine, and we're on our way to a rendezvous. And we did that with the abort guidance system, rather than the primary guidance system, just to check out everything. We also checked out the landing radar on, on that mission and found out that it had been programmed improperly, and had that happened on Apollo 11, they would not have landed. So we found out some interesting things on Apollo 10. The landing rehearsal was nearly complete, all that remained was to separate from the descent stage of the LEM and fly back to the command module. Stafford began resetting the controls, unaware that Cernan had done exactly the same thing. And I had all the switches set, and Tom instinctively, as we will do, will reach over there and, uh, and change the position of the guidance switch, because he knew it had to be changed to AGS. Well, I had already changed it to AGS, and so when it fired, it was on a primary guidance system, and the primary guidance system didn't know where to tell it to go, so we did separate and spun out of control. The thing was tumbling and rolling all over the place, and they were really in, in trouble, and, and there was quite a few expletives broadcast to the world audience um, before they got it back under control. It was a pretty crazy moment. I remember seeing a lunar horizon go by in different directions about eight times in some 15 seconds. Tom took it back from the computer, got it on the control, we gave it back to the abort guidance system. We got the burn on time when we were on the boot and everything turned out all right. It was later determined that the lander had come within two seconds of crashing into the lunar surface before Stafford and Cernan regained control. Despite the few unnerving seconds, Apollo 10 had cleared a pathway almost down to the lunar surface. Snoopy's mission was over. The next LEM to fly was reserved for Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong. It would be called the Eagle.